Hi there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. In today's episode, we're going to focus on the perceptual color stage. So that is the third stage of my uh, classical painting technique. So I'm gonna be calling this again, I'm gonna be calling it Upari's classical painting technique. Well, the first stage was the underpainting stage. The second stage was the local color stage. And now with this portrait, we're gonna move on to the perceptual color stage. And here we have an image of our model, Madeline. And I'm gonna keep a picture of her to the top left corner of your screen as we develop the painting. So remember last time we focused on the local colors. So we didn't really put in too much hue variation. So today I'm gonna to show you how to look for and how to push uh, hue variation within flesh tones. And this is also going to be down to how we perceive individual areas of color. That being said, on the palette here we have titanium white flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And our painting medium of choice uh, is Neo McGilp. And if you would like to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can feel free to scroll down to the description box down below. Also though, if you are interested in purchasing uh, it's the same type of materials that I'm using, you know, the exact brand of the oil paints and the uh, medium that I'm using on my palette. I now have affiliate links in the description box down below. So one way to support me would be to click on those links. It'll take you directly to the Amazon page that has the specific item that I'm using. And if you're interested in scrolling through them or even purchasing one, that would really, really help control contribute to this show. All right, so let's go ahead now and mix up our color value web. And the color value web is going to be an essential part in working with these colors. So the first two colors I'm gonna mix are, are alizarin crimson permanent, alizarin crimson permanent, and our burnt umber. Now we're gonna put in a little bit of the ivory black, and now I'm gonna to start to put in the cadmium red medium. And the way that I'm observing these colors, the way that I'm uh, coming up with these colors is, um, you know, by blurring my eyes at the model, but also kind of conceptually, I'm thinking about, um, you know, the exact flesh tones that we mixed up in the last layer. Uh, so in the, uh, the previous one, that is the local uh, color stage. So our model's flesh tones are kind of more in the pinkish family as opposed to the orange-like family. So the reason I'm using the uh, flake white is that it allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much. So now I'm gonna use the titanium white to show you the difference. So just a tiny bit of the titanium white allows me to raise the value much more, but I think this is a little too pink. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the yellow ochre. And the first thing I wanna do here with the color value web is to uh, get back the local colors that we had established before. So I think they're a little bit too pink still. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit of the sap green just to kind of uh, you know bring down the heat of those colors. Sap green is really, really useful for this. All right, so now the titanium white, and now we're going to have this color. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, deviate from these colors. So I'm gonna stick within this color family, sorry, this value family, but I'm going to deviate with the colors, okay? So we're gonna have one deviation here that's warmer. So when we get to the painting and we say, oh, okay, this is warmer, this is cooler, this is pinker, this is more orangey, that's how we're going to work with our perception of certain shapes. And now we're gonna mix up a cool, a colder one, which is the ivory black, ultramarine blue, flake white, titanium white. All right, so now we'll, these are basically going to be our gears. We're gonna be shifting gears between, uh, are we in the more kind of the warmish area, cooler area, neutral earthy, local color area. And um, this is just going to help us also just keep organized. And I'm still gonna be using bristle brushes. So the way we're gonna work with these color uh, 
relationships is we're going to gauge uh, specific zones, okay? So this zone in comparison to this zone in comparison to this zone. So we'll keep it, you know, very simple, groups into threes. Now, um, the problem though with the photo reference and with photo references in general is it really, really limits uh, what we can see in terms of the, uh, you know, the colors. So I think the first thing I'll do is push the value a little further. Um, I didn't oil out the painting, I actually kind of forgot. So oiling out the painting just means uh, exactly this. Let me show you. So hopefully you can see it there. So that's the Neo McGill medium. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of medium over top of the areas that we're going to work on. And I think I'm going to focus primarily on the flesh tones and try to take it as far as possible. I'm not too worried about the background or anything like that. I'm more focused on trying to, you know, clarify the, uh, what needs to be looked at in the perceptual color stage. Okay, so now that we oiled that out, I think what we'll do is we'll push the value range a little bit, so, I'm going to use the local color range and I'm going to push this value. Now it's not straight up white, but it's the, um, you know, the, it's titanium white added into the uh, color value web, the, the local color. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to key lights based off of this light. So we're going to look at the values in relation to one another and the colors. So uh, I'll tell you what, there is a light shape there, but it's not quite as uh, as warm. So it's cooler. So we're going to say now that this shape is cooler, meaning it's a little closer to that kind of bluish family, but not you know, here's the trick though, with cooler flesh tones, if you go too cold, you're going to get a zombie effect. So that's why I'm kind of combating this now by shifting gears to the warmer color. And see how we're just very, very lightly putting in that change. This is going to be very subtle stuff. So now there's going to be another lighter plane, cooler plane, uh, very much using what we mixed up for the cooler value color value web. Okay, so we're gonna be pushing that light a little bit. And um, this whole area here is going to, we're gonna to have to work on these colors now. So this one is gonna be cooler, so I'm gonna add a little bit of sap green into the local, the middle range of the local values, the local color value web. We're gonna be pushing the hue variation here, so it's gonna be a little bit cooler than what we had before. Now I did say I wasn't terribly worried about the, uh, the background color, but just for the sake of demonstration, I think that what I'll do next after I work on these uh, spots of color is go into the background. All right, so now another shape to look at. So again, we're gauging specific areas of color now. So I think right around here, we have a more pinkish color. So we're gonna shift gears to a more pink-like color. So with a very simple semi-transparent application of paint, we now have a pinker tone and we can still see the layer underneath showing through. So we're in no danger of losing the uh, value arrangement. And now the next thing to look at is going to be the shadow. So I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna use a synthetic brush and I'm gonna use the uh, middle tone. Hopefully you can see this, I'm taking a risk with this. But I'm using the this area of the value and I'm adding a little bit of the ultramarine blue. So we want something that's cooler, more in the bluish range. There we have that. So I just want it to be a little bit cooler. 
in relation to the flesh tones. And while we're at it, we'll clarify some drawing mishaps here. So the nose is actually kind of being pushed in a little bit too much, so I'm going to have to clarify that shape a little better later. But for now, I'll just cover up until this point here. And there's even going to be a little warmer area in the shadow, so right here. So we're shifting gears to the warmer tone now. Now, I don't want to go too far, so you can see right here, we went too far. So you can just subtract with your, ideally not with your fingers, <laughs> especially when you're using flake white, but eh, we'll be fine. I'm going to subtract with this. And at the same time, I'm also kind of adding more of a tone. And now we have a, let's just use this brush, a lighter and more pinker, pinker, pinkish spot. So it's more pink in comparison to this shape. I perceive this one to be more pink than this one. So this is how we're working with our perception rather than just trying to, you know, um, find a perfect recipe or like copy uh, the shapes. Instead, we're relating the areas of color to one of one another. So it's going to be a little bit darker and a little bit warmer here. And we have that. And also for the neck, I didn't really put anything down for the neck. <laughs> so we should probably do that. Uh, so this is going to be the uh, from the local color family. Very simple there. All right, so now that we have these spots of color mapped out, the rest is just going to be fitting in and closing up the forms based on these uh, color, uh, these color spot relations. So I think that the forehead is so similar to the um, the colors here. So really, all we did was adjust this color this one, this one, and then this one. And then now we're just going to continue to close up the forms. And we'll, we'll paint the color for the iris later on. Don't worry about that. And the key word with all of this is perception. So we are relying on our perception of individual spots of color. And I, I will admit that this is not the best exercise to do when working with a photo reference. So especially if you are a beginner to painting, what I would suggest is to uh, paint still life or maybe blocks of color uh, and you know paint them in different lighting scenarios painting them in sunlight maybe morning light evening light you know like monet's hat uh, what are they called uh, haystacks monet's haystacks um, and i'm going to be developing training exercises okay so that is in the works along with the formal writing that i'm uh, creating for this technique i'm also going to be creating some training exercises some training so some self-teaching kits and so within those you will have uh, you know exercises on how to enhance your color relationships because just like uh, when you're learning how to draw when you're learning how to see shape remember how difficult it was to learn how to you know just block the basic proportions in for the face and all of that well there's another way of seeing uh, another way of observing nature when you're looking at specific spots of colors in relations to one another. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up uh, colors for the background and the dark of the hair. So let's just get some larger brushes to do that. All right, so I think I'll mix somewhere. I don't know. Let, let's, let's mix over here. So I'm going to mix up the background color first, and it's going to be pretty simple, okay? It's just going to be the um, alizarin... Crimson Permanent, the Cadmium Red, a little bit of Burnt Umber just to calm down the heat of those colors and that'll be about it. And then for the darker darks for the hair, let's get a different brush here. So I'm going to use just um, Ivory Black and I'm going to mix into here. Ivory Black and Alizarin Crimson Permanent. All right, so now as I fill in the background, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna explain a little bit, um, you know, what, where the color, where the ideas with color are coming from. Uh, so I studied at Studio Incominati 
for about two semesters. And uh, the founder of Studio Incominati, uh, Nelson Shanks, he studied with Henry Henchy. So he studied with someone, uh, you know, an, an impressionist. Henry Henchy, you know, he has his own type of teaching his own way and they use the same language okay they, they use the same color perception so i am taking a little bit from what i learned when i was at studio and um you know and i'm taking a little bit from the impressionists but also i'm adding to it because uh the, the teaching the way it goes um you know, with the uh, the Henry Henchy students or like the impressionist way of looking at the spots of color, they usually do that right away in an alla prima kind of uh, technique. Now, not everyone works in that that style, but what I'm doing is I'm uh, redefining uh, the way that we approach the color perception. So rather than going on a blank canvas or something and trying to look for the spots of color, I had I had us first look for the local color because there are two ways to observe this, okay? Uh, you can observe it via, uh, you know, just looking at local color, uh, but then you have the temperature of the light. So the temperature of the light, the quality, should I say, the quality of the light um, can be very nicely described in terms of color. So color can really help you uh, get the, uh, a specific nature of a given light source but the reason I'm redefining this uh, you know this method of color perception in this way is that it, I want to have the uh, I want to answer the question of value and I also want to answer the question of local color where are the local colors and how do the planes deviate with respect to the local color so that's why I'm uh, redefining the idea of color perception. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just selecting, um, you know, areas that I want to make darker. And I'm using the underpainting, notice how you see the underpainting there? I'm using the underpainting to uh, let some of the lights and the darks show through. And like I said, I don't want to uh, finish everything here, so I think that ought to be enough for us to uh, progress further in this painting. So there are two areas that I overlooked, uh, and I mentioned one of them last time, on the last episode featuring this painting, the iris. So the iris is a little bit blue-green, so I'm using sap green and ultramarine blue, but it's not that bright, so I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber just to bring down the chroma, okay? So the burnt umber is just going to help to bring down some of the chroma, and we're going to use the flake white. Remember, flake white has this property of which allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much. And again, if you're interested in um, you know, purchasing these kinds of materials, there will be links to Amazon in the description box down below. So don't forget the affiliate links. All right, so now we're going to switch to a different brush. And this is going to be for another area that I seem to have forgotten. So this is going to be for the cast shadow, or the form shadow, should I say, on the neck. And it's fairly green. So I'm going to make it green, so the sap green, but it's not going to be as green as this though. So we're going to use the alizarin crimson. So here is how you can relate colors on the palette. Now I'm calling this green, but it doesn't mean that it's like this green, okay? It's green-ish. It leans more towards green, uh, the color green, than, you know, like pink or whatever. Let's just put in some of this color. All right, so that ought to be good with that. And so now with this brush, I'm going to very uh, lightly, basically I'm going to tint this color. And I'm using a Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle. Uh, if you've been watching the, uh, the show, you know, it, back when it was only once a week, uh, I used to talk about this brush all the time, this type of brush, the Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle. This is still one of my favorite brushes to use, and I'm happy to say that they are available on Amazon. So 
I do have a link there to the um, the page on Amazon where you can purchase the same type of brush. It, it is a bristle synthetic mix. So it's a little bit of a nice uh, combination of, you know, being able to grab a lot of paint just like a bristle brush does, but it's soft enough to do what we're doing here. Uh, that is apply like a very soft and smooth transition. It has a little bit of the best of both worlds, and I think it's better used in this stage. Or should I say, I think it's preferred to use it in this stage when we don't want to apply too much paint, but we still want to have some control over how much paint we're adding. All right, I seem to have forgotten to hit the play button on my camera, but um, let me go ahead and show you what I just did. So I'm gonna erase what I just put in. So I'm using a, um, it's a clean and dry brush, okay? All right, so I erased it. So that was uh, for the color of the, uh, the iris. So first thing I'm gonna do is put in the pupil. A simple dark shape there for the pupil. And then with the Neo McGilp, with the Neo McGilp, I'm going to thin out the paint a little bit, and just a little. And there we have the color for the iris. You can see how the layers are starting to build. And I actually already have that color here for the other iris. So I'm gonna go back in with the dark for the pupil. All right, so now that we have established these uh, color spots, so that is this light, it's a little bit closer to the yellowish family. There's much more of a deeper pink here in relation to this pink. This is cooler, but not as cool as say this area here. And then we have a more pinkish uh, variation over here. Like I said, we split it up into zones. So zone here, zone here, and then a zone there. And then we put in some of the darks for the hair and for the background. So at this stage, all the information that is needed in the perceptual color stage has been found. Now the next thing we can do with each individual layer is to correct mistakes from the previous layer. This is a building process. So with a smaller brush and with a kind of middle pinkish value, I'm going to correct uh, the shape or I'm gonna try my best to correct the shape for the nose. And I think once the nose has been uh, resolved a little better, I think we'll call it. So we're gonna push a little bit of a darker shape underneath the nose. That's a little too red. So I'm gonna subtract, if I can, let me go here. Instead of subtracting, I'm gonna blend. So I'm gonna blend that shape into the dark of the nose, and I'm gonna try that again. And let's say with the color for the iris. So let's use that one. There we go. Now we have the bottom plane of the nose. Uh, the root of the nose, that is, is now, uh, I think, in the correct spot. Now the next thing to do is just to adjust the bulb of the nose. So with the lighter value, that's still a little more pink. I'm gonna push that shape up. And that might be pushing it a little too pink. So we're gonna return to that local, local color. I think it's also a matter of the uh, this angle here for the bulb of the nose. It's a little more flat. 
So what we're doing by uh, you know adjusting this shape is we're adding more specificity to the poster image. And the poster image is again uh, prioritizing the light and dark. So again, it's, this is a building process, okay? We are human beings, we make mistakes. Correcting those mistakes is how we learn, how we grow. Okay, so I think that's a little bit better for the uh, the nose. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I still see that I can push the uh, color and the shadow a little bit more. So this is uh, a risk, but I'm taking the color of the iris, and basically putting it into the shadow. And in this way, I'm trying to push the uh, relationship between the shadow color and the light color. But I'm only able to do this because of the layer underneath. And if I want to adjust the color you know, if I don't like this color, I can simply subtract it. And now we're really starting to get the, the effect of light. And that's it for the perceptual color stage. Remember the perceptual color stage is not about trying to render completely, uh, you know, close up any kind of forms though you can. The purpose of the uh, perceptual color stage is then to add hue variation on top of the color scaffolding, if you will, that we established in the local color stage, the previous one. So the next stage after this is going to be the selective render. So that means that we're going to now take all the information that we have in terms of the forms, the local colors, and the perceptual colors, and we're going to take that and specifically render certain area. So we're going to target focus our attention. So the next time we return to this uh, smaller painting, we're going to focus probably more into the nose, more into the eyes, the mouth, and then some of the subtle edge work, and then it'll be done. That being said, always remember in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really hope that these videos help you out, and I truly do hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back again with our next episode tomorrow.